Hey everybody, great to have you back here in the fish tank. Today it's our monthly deep dive into the Minion Masters meta. That's right, it's mmm time. Now if you haven't followed this series, basically what I do is I keep a track of the leaderboard since the start of the season. So that's the top 50 decks in solo, 2v2 randoms and 2v2 pre-mades. And then we crunch all that data into a spreadsheet and then we figure out from that what are the best cards. And then today we're going to do something a little bit extra that we haven't done before. We're going to extrapolate that card data and then figure out what are the best decks. So if you're looking uh, to get some ideas of the sort of stuff you should be playing this season to be competitive, this has you covered. Right, so whether you're a new player or an experienced player alike, this information should be really useful to you. And without any further ado, let's dive in and see what we've got. So the first thing we're going to look at is our master popularity. And this is overall master popularity. So we have a bar graph for each of them, a little bar. And of course, it is separated into the different modes. So yellow is 1v1. Uh, the kind of the ready color is 2v2 randoms and the blue is 2v2 pre-made. So if we have a look at this overall, we can see that APEP is a very, very strongly played. It's the most played master, which of course is very different to what we had last season which we would have seen Morelia right up there. And we can see here the Morelia has dropped quite a bit. Uh, so Apep, Volko, Stormbringer, the top three played Masters overall, and then Morelia. Um, and we can potentially think about why that, why that is. Morelia got a little bit of a nerf last time. Remember, she had her skeletons reduced from her spellbook, Perk 1 and Perk 2. Um, and that seems to have caused people to think about other options. Um, and Apep two or three seasons ago was horrifically dominant everywhere um, but that kind of dropped off a little bit Morelia was everywhere but then things have switched back so it's not a case that Apep's got any stronger it's a case that the other options have got weaker um, so King Puff one thing to note has had a big increase remember King Puff did get a buff in the last patch so his, his perk 2 is more efficient I think it had a slightly reduced cooldown and the areas that you could collect and then buff units with the perk 2 was increased. So we've had an overall 6% increase for King Puff and an overall 6% increase for Apep. Those are the two big increases. And then as mentioned, big decrease for Morelia, overall 13%. Everything else is kind of there or thereabouts. So basically a lot of Morelia has switched to King Puff or Apep. Right, so Apep overall most played master but let's break that down a little bit and have a look at the different ranks so first of all uh, sorry i should say um the modes game modes so first of all we're going to look at the 1v1 so the pie chart on the left is for last season 1.5 and the pie chart on the right for this season 1.51 so we can see as we mentioned just now morelia previously the yellow was the most played master but we can see she's dropped down a lot in solos and the reverse of that, again, Apep has gone from being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the 6th played master, to being the 1st played master. So big increases for Apep, Valorian, and Mordor, uh, and also big decreases for Morelia, Volko, and Diona. Um, if we have a look at the King Puff here, hasn't changed too much, but I think we'll see King Puff mostly be being played in 2s um, compared to, to solos. So it seems like Morelia and Volko, they both got nerfed, remember? We said about the Morelia nerf. Volko also had a timer nerf for the perk one. So it seems like a lot of those players switched over to APEP. So there we have um, the, uh, the the graphs for the 1v1. Uh, Mana cost stayed the same, 3.8. So that's really useful information if you're a newer player. What site average mana should I have? Between 3 and 4.5. And, um, and most of the decks will be around the middle of that so 3.8 right so apep is dominant followed by volko and milloween in 1v1 but does that follow in 2v2 randoms so again 1.5 last season on the left morelia yellow dominant not anymore we can see again apep is the top one and second place with 15 percent of the decks king puff previously king puff was an afterthought but now King Puff with that buff is right back in there. So Apep, King Puff, Stormbringer, the top three masters in randoms. Uh, the average cost hasn't really changed. 
So we've seen some uh, King Puff 13% increase, biggest increase. Also, again, Apep getting a big increase. Uh, and uh, the, the other side of that coin, Morelia losing 20% of the decks. And uh, Setsu dropping down as well a little bit. Remember, Setsu did get a little nerf with the um, summoning sickness when she lands being slightly extended. But I don't really think that changes much. And it's definitely not the balance that Setsu really needs. Uh, but Setsu's one of those awkward masters that's incredible in the hands of a good player, but kind of really not great. So it's in, in the hands of a, a lesser player, so it makes it really difficult to balance. Okay, so Apep, King Puff, and Stormbring are the top three masters in randoms. And then now, if we switch to pre-maids, 2v2 pre-maids, we can see again Morelia was number one last season. Not anymore! So this season, Volko, Stormbringer, and Morelia, the top three... So, King Puff did get a sizable increase, but it, it's still rarely played compared to the other ones. So, King Puff up to 6.6%, whereas previously it was just a couple of a percent. So, King Puff and Volko being played a little bit more than last season in pre maids but Morelia really dropping off, and also, interestingly, Ratbo dropping off as well. So, again, the average mana cost not changing for average mana here in pre-made. So Volko, Stormbring, and Morelia, the top three masters in pre-mates. So if you're thinking about what master you want to play, this should give you a good idea of a good starting point of what are the meta strong masters. Right, next up, the rarity composition. We've done this every time we do this meta analysis. Doesn't really change much, but it's always worth repeating, especially for newer players take account of the green green are the common cards the most basic cards in the game and as you can see all of the decks are a majority common cards so when we're talking about is this game pay to win it has very very few pay to win facets you can see that the most basic cards make up most of the decks um, and i think that's really important uh, because that's very different and we said this a million times that's very different to how a lot of the other uh, card games do it as you go up the rarities the cards get stronger mini masters that's not really the case as you go up the rarities the cards become more unique doesn't necessarily mean strong but just means unique so you can see here on average we have some legendaries some supremes a little bit more, more rares and then mostly commons in all of the decks so that should be uh, good information for everyone Right, next up we look at the factions. Remember we've got nine factions, I believe, in the game. And we'll have a look at the faction popularity within all of the different game modes. Now, we will go through a lot of information today. We've already gone through some. So if you need to, screenshot, pause the video, whatever, just to uh, allow yourself to digest it, please go ahead and do so. Right, so the top level of graphs are our current 1.51 and the bottom ones are the 1.50 from last season. I know the text is kind of small, but the colors should help you. And the, the, I've chosen the colors to be kind of, um, to kind of make sense. So we can see in solos, Voidborn is still the choice. Uh, and we know that's a lot to do with, I think, some Korgoth decks, uh, which really need Voidborn cards to pop off. And then we've got Zenshi and uh, Scrat and Outlander, which have changed position a little bit, but not too much. So we've seen as a, more Empyrean cards or decks, or yeah, cards, I guess. More Empyrean cards this season in solo. So that's the biggest factional increase, followed by Scrats. Uh, Voidborn and Zenshi have dropped off a little bit, so not as dominant, but still the first and second there. And then if we look in randoms, we can see that Voidborn has dropped off to second place, with Scrats being the third, the first choice there. And then we've got Outlander and Empyrean. Remember, this is we're not talking about full faction decks this is just a case of looking at all the cards which are the most popular factions overall so in randoms uh, some increases for crystal elves and scrats stout heart and zenshi have dropped off remember last season was a stout heart season with the highland huntress um dominating uh so uh, i i think the one of the she's been nerfed so you're gonna see less of her being played but also because it's not a stout heart season. We're probably going to see less stout heart decks just off the back of that, really. Uh, and then in pre maids again, Voidborn is dominant, followed by Outlander and Scrat. So they've changed around a little bit. 
We can see that Zen Shi, the bright green, has gone up the most 4%. Slither with a bit of an increase as well. Stout Hearts and Crystal Elves again dropping off. But uh, Voidborn really the dominant faction overall in the game. Right. So next up, we're going to have a look at our wildcard usage. So as always, we have our completely superfluous one, uh, 1v1 graph pie chart. No wildcards in solos, of course. So randoms and pre-mades. Um, slightly more use of wildcards this season in randoms overall. In pre-mades, we've seen more double wildcards, but less single wildcards. But we can see that generally overall, most people don't use wild cards, which for me I like. A lot of people do like wild cards, and that's one of the reasons why they're still in the game. Remember, wild cards are allowing you to uh, run duplicates, up to two duplicates, meaning three copies of a single card in a deck, or two copies of two cards in a deck. Um, but we, I mean me personally, I don't like wild cards. Right, and what are the most wild carded of cards? So in randoms, we've got the Scrap Pack, the Elite Swarmer, the Lost Legionnaires and Fergus Flagoon Fighter. And for pre-mates, again, the Lost Legionnaires, Scotty, Dragon Ball and Radic. So what we'll probably see when we look at the cards, these will be strong cards. And of course, you know, that's people wildcard them because they're strong and then they get extra strong. Right. So let's have a look at the cards overall. So these are the top cards overall in all three game modes. No shocker, rapid response reserves. Last season was number one. This season is also number one, but it is expected to get nerfed in the next patch. And I think the nerf is going to be the marine count goes back up to six, which was the tiny, tiny nerf it got. But the mana cost is going to go up to three. So I think that's going to really make people have to now make a decision about whether they want to include the card or not, because previously at two mana, it seems like almost a no-brainer. Uh, and also one of the offshoots of that is you'll no longer get it as a King Puff Perk 2 card. So we'll see next season if this changes with that. Uh, so the top cards, Rapid Response Reserves. We've got Scrap Pack, Elite Swarmer, Cleaver. And then the, the first sort of damage in spell there is the Chain Lightning. Um, and just a quick note on the, um, the Legend here. If it's green... That means it's doing better than it was last season uh, rank wise. If it's red, it's ranking lower. If it's black, it's the same. And if it's white, which we don't see here, then it's um, it's a new card. So interestingly, the cards from last season, um, we definitely saw them being played. I think that was the Highland Huntress. Um, not so much the, um, the other chap, the uh, Frostberry Bearer. Uh, the new cards for this season were Denver and the Wagasaur Pup. We very, very rarely saw those. So um, overall, in my whole analysis, I only saw two copies of Denver being played and 36 copies of the Wagasaw Pup, which is very, very few. So I wouldn't expect, wouldn't be surprised to see those getting a bit of a, a buff next season. Right, so the biggest increases overall, Scrap Pack, Defenso Chopper, Resonating Blast Crystal, kind of interesting. Future Present, remember that got a buff. A mana reduction last time, so that doesn't kind of surprise too much. Leilel's Vortex, we've seen a lot more of that spell, and I think that might be because we're seeing a lot more KP, King Puff, and King Puff has a lot of Horde small units, so the Vortex is great against that. Uh, and overall, the biggest decrease is Rimmergull's Breath. Remember, the damage got nerfed from 180 to 150, um, and I think that's why we see things, people using uh, the Resonating Blast Crystal, for example, and Layla's Vortex is because they're having to move away from one damage spell and looking at using some alternatives. Uh, we've also seen some decreases to Daggerfall, Grenadier, Bouncebury Flingers, and the Warrior. So, overall, there were every single card except two featured on a leaderboard deck. Can you guess what they are? So two cards were not used. Let me know in the comments down below, and if you're one of the first people to guess either of these, then I'll send you uh, a big dwarf pack. So, the two cards that were not used, what were they? Good luck. Right, so that's the overall cards. Let's break down the cards a little bit more, and we'll look at them on in their different game modes. Because we know some cards are really specific to certain game modes, others are just meta across everywhere. 
So in solos, the top cards, we're looking at the Scrap Pack, the Bounce Breed Flingers, the Elite Swarmer, Cleaver. You know, these are really strong cards and uh, no real surprises that they're there. Uh, and then if we just look at the what has increased the most, the Scrap Pack had a big increase in play rate. Tantrum Throwers, Boomer, Squire Puff, and Cleaver. Cleaver was already a strong played card. We can see there it's gone up from 8th to 4th. Uh, but I believe Cleaver is going to get a health nerf in the upcoming patch. So um, I think that's going to be from 600 to 550 HP. So that could change things a lot because the Cleaver is one of those cards that even if it's only got one HP left and it gets one huge hit off, that can be huge damage, huge damage, huge value. So if you are, if you do reduce its HP, there's a lot of times if you pay attention to how many times there's a Cleaver hanging around with hardly any HP. And then if you think, well, that wouldn't happen after the patch, it will give you an idea of the sort of impact that that sort of change can have. Uh, and then the biggest decreases in solos, Bounce Breed Flinger, Elite Swarmer, it's still up there, but uh, not as heavily played as before. Spear Throwers, Curse Bearer, and the Sapphire Pebble. And we can look, when we have a look at all of these three game modes, we can see there's a lot of cards that are very common. So we can see the Cleaver, for example, in all of them, the Elite Swarmer there, in all of them, the Scrap Pack there, in all of them these are really staple cards that fit in almost any deck and uh, in any game mode so if you're thinking about starting to build a deck you can't go wrong looking at sort of any of those now if we look at what's increased in randoms the middle one we've had the defenso chopper which the defenso chopper could be in response to more king puff being played because king puff tends to have a lot of small units also a lot of flying um, scrats, the propeller scrats, which the defensor is great at. Uh, so that could potentially be that. Um, and the, the so the defensor chopper had the biggest increase. Propeller horde has gone up a lot as well. So those kind of things work together there on different sides of the coin. Fergus, crossbow dudes and scrat horde also seeing big increases in 2v2 randoms. And the decreases, of course, the walking blind date. Highland Huntress, remember we mentioned she got a nerf. Uh, the Warrior, Curse Bearer, and Vulture Prime dropping off in randoms. And then if we look at pre-maids, pre-maid has seen increases to Whirly Scrat, Defenso Chopper, Scrapyard, Jinglong, and Prop Scrats. And the biggest decreases in pre-maids, Cleaver, interestingly, we can see here it's dropped to second from first. Um, Crystal Arcanist, Stint, Grenadier, and Scrat Tunnels dropping off a little bit there. But still, there or thereabouts, a lot of those. So if you're looking to build a deck, these are great starting points great ways to build it so these are the top cards but just to clarify these are the top non-spell cards so minions we can see we've also got a building in there as in the cage prowler so top cards non-spells uh, and then we'll look at the spells separately so if you're trying to think about what kind of spells should i use in my deck what are the best removal spells uh, this should answer that for you so again Rapid Response Reserves, top and still top in all three game modes. Expect that to change with the nerf. Um, and, it, you know, it is a strong card, but I think the problem with it is it's so versatile. It just goes in any deck, and that's why we see it everywhere, because everyone's playing it. So we see in solos, uh, Morkel's Mark there. Um, so... so Rapid Response Reserves is first, Morgul's Mark is second, but Rapid Response Reserves was played almost three times as much as Morgul's Mark. So that just goes to show how dominant that Rapid Response Reserves is. So the big movers, when we talk about 1v1 spells, Future Present and Future Past both got buffed in the last patch, seeing a lot more of those. Scrotillary, Morgul's Mark, and Shockrock, seeing more of those, and the decreases um, chain Lightning, and the Chain Lightning had a big increase. We can see here it's from it's currently 6th, it was 2nd. It's being played half as much as it was before, for whatever reason. Uh, Daggerfall, Pinter of Dread have been dropping off. Interestingly, Rapid Response Reserves is amongst the biggest decreases, but it was played so much last season that even though it's dropped off a little bit this season, it's still hugely dominant. And Frostfeather flyby dropping off in there as well. Um, and one thing we can see, we've got some accursed cards, which especially 
Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're seeing some accursed decks, but I think from experience we know there's some decent accursed decks out there on the solo leaderboard. Right, so in randoms, Rapid Response Reserves, Chain Lightning, Rimmergol's Breath still top. Remember, Rimmergol's Breath did get that substantial nerf. Uh, so the top three are the same, but they all have a reduced play rate from last season. So if people are playing less of those, it makes sense to think that they're playing more of something else. Um, and I think especially the Rimmergol's Breath is the one that's had a, a biggest reduction in play rate. Um, so what are people playing instead? So notable increases in randoms. Lay Ladle's Vortex, we mentioned that before. Resonating Blast Crystal. Bearvalanche, Wheel of Doom, and Beam of Doom. So a lot of those are not direct replacements for Rimmergold's Breath, but replacements enough, especially things like the Bearvalanche. So again, the, the reductions in randoms, Rimmergold's Breath got nerfed, played half as much as it was before. But it's still the top three, it's still the third most played spell. So it's played half as much, but still in the top three. So that just shows to, goes to show how much it was played last season. Daggerfall, Nivir's Breath, we know that got a big nerf, no e extra damage with the Ascension anymore. That's played as a third of it of what it was last season. And Mountain Shaper, of course, Mountain Shaper did get rebalanced. I've seen very, very, very few people playing Mountain Shaper. And then if we have a look at pre-maids, so again, it's the same kind of story. Rimmergold's Breath still there, but the play rate's gone down, so other clear spells have gone up. Again, notable increases. Resonating Blast Crystal, Blade Star, Chain Lightning, Wheel of Doom, and Future Present. Future Present's kind of weird in there because it's a very different kind of spell, but it's still a spell, so we must include it. And of course, the decreases. Rimmergold's Breath, around 50% again of what it was before. Rapid Response Reserve. So the top cards are still being played a lot, even though they're being played less than they were they're still dominant at the top so again just goes to show how much they were played last season right so where do we get to uh rapid response reserves dropped down dragon ball dropped down remember it was bugged last season so it did uh, full face damage when it shouldn't so a lot of people were playing to kind of awkwardly take advantage of that black hole that's dropped off and i wonder if that's because of the reduction to rimmergold's breath um i it seemed that a lot of people played it to counter the breath. Um, maybe they don't fear the other spells quite so much. Um, and Unholy Ground as well dropping off. So again, that's a potential indicator of reduced accursed decks out there. Right, so we've looked at the cards. We've looked at the spells. Now let's get a little bit more granular with the cards and have a look at the top legendaries, which is really useful if you're a new player because you're generally... As a new player, you want to get your hands on the legendaries, right? They're cool. Uh, and when it comes to crafting, you want to be able to craft things that are going to be A, strong, and B, versatile. Because remember, when we talked about the rarities, legendary doesn't necessarily mean strong. It just kind of means unique. Um, and not all legendaries are equal. So if you're going to craft one, you want to be using, you want to be crafting something that's going to be strong. And depending on the, your kind of play style, you might be okay with just playing one deck. But uh, a lot of the legendaries are sort of really, really uh, flexible and allow them to fit into many, many different kinds of decks where others are really specific and require a whole deck uh, to be built around them. Right, so have a look at our legendaries in solo. Jin Long, that should be black instead of green. That's a mistake. Uh, but that's Jin Long's still the number one. Jolo's gone up a little bit. Scotty's gone down a little bit. We've also got Ardera, Radic. Shen, we've got the Snake Druid, we've got Kurnaf, Crystalback, um, and we've also got uh, Ruby in there. Uh, so, what has changed since last season? Ardera's play rate's gone up quite a lot. That means, uh, see, Ardera is one of those cards that's very specific to a deck. You're going to need a, an Empyrean deck to support her or her to support it. So, there'll be more Empyreans out there. Um, we've also seen a big increase to Ritual of Servitude. Uh, and that's um, not really a, a deck, a strat that we see in solos very often. Uh, and that might be because of the wreck change. The way that Wrecked works now, it kind of supports big, heavy um, cycle decks, uh, heavy cycle decks. 
like uh, like a ritual, whereas previously it wouldn't. Uh, Radix had an increased play rate. Avea also had an increased play rate. Kind of interesting. Haven't seen too many really strong Avea decks after her big change. Um, and Bara in there as well. And we've seen decreases to, for Scotty, for Azog, to Mardred, to Morgrel, and Feng the Wanderer. So that's legendaries when we're talking about solos. And then if we look into randoms, we can see the top three have stayed the same. So Fergus is there, kind of dominant really. We've got uh, Radic and we've got uh, Howling Moon. Now, if we look at the, what things have changed, so Fergus has had a decent increase. Wheel of Doom, uh, Lelel, Mardridge, and interestingly, a Kinlap. So these are not necessarily cards that have been played a lot, but cards that their play rate has gone up a lot. Uh, and then their decrease is Xiaolong, so that's a little green dragon, Mountain Shaper, which wasn't actually played at all um, in the randoms uh, data set. Corpse Explosion, um, Gax, and Bolf. So Corpse Explosion, again, one of those cards that gives us an idea that maybe a curse decks are dropping off. Uh, and then if we look at pre-maids, again, Fergus dominating. We've got Jing up there and the Z Zips Zapinator. Always seems to dominate in pre-maids more than randoms, I think. Or it could be the other way around. I'm not sure. I can't remember what it was. Um, no, I think that's correct. So uh, the big increases for pre-maids, Jinglong, Wheel of Doom, Bara, Stormy, interestingly, and Reckonator, and decreases to Lady and Frey, to Lelel. Uh, that kind of suggests that maybe a drop-off of people playing Stormbringer and Elves, uh, Fergus Scott, and Chisma. So those are the legendaries if you're thinking about what should I craft. So overall, Fergus, Flagoon, Fighter, top legendary, Jinglong, second, Prime, Sergeant, Radic, third. But we can see a lot of them that appear on all of the different game modes. So if, you're, if you can only craft one, um, any of those that are all over the place will be helpful and you can play them in any sort of mode and get a lot of value out of them. So, those are the top legendaries. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at decks. We haven't done that before, so this is a little bit exciting. So, from our data set, we're able to have um, basically a, a ranking of cards. The most played cards down to the least played cards. And we kind of extrapolate the thought that the most played cards are going to be the best cards. Right, because people wouldn't play them and get onto the leaderboard if they're not. So then we're going to extrapolate that and have a look at the decks. So we, we know the decks, we know the ranking of each card, so we're going to average the rank for each of the decks and that should give us an overall top decks. So let's, uh, let's do this. And this is going to be the first month we're doing this. I had some feedback that suggested this would be a good idea. So let me know what you think of this. Is this a useful addition? So let's have a look at our solo decks. First of all, so basically I rank the decks, the, the lowest rank at the top going down, and, and then I kind of picked out the masters. So we, because uh, for example, we might have had like five Morelia decks in the top five. Uh, we don't want to see all of the same decks, right? So we, these are the top five, but without repeating masters, if that makes sense. So we've got Morelia, Volko, King Puff, Apep, and Ratbo, which are probably the what we would expect. King Puff maybe not quite so expectant based on the, the, the data that we've seen before uh, but of course one of the things we can see is there's a lot of cards that again are featured in all or most of them so we got rapid response reserves in all of the decks scrutillary in four of them uh, so that gives you an idea of what is very very strong so to give you an example the top deck the uh, rank average for all of the cards was 8.9 um, so we've got 8.9, 13, 15.6 for the, for the rest uh, to, to kind of give you an idea. So if you're looking at a strong solos deck, any of these will serve you just fine. Um, and as I mentioned, you can see, you know, there's a, there's a lot of similarities between them. If, if we have a look at the overall ranking of the cards, we see that, for example, like the top 25% of all cards is made up of a very small overall percentage of cards. Uh, and that's, you know, that's just the way it works, right? People figure out what's strong and then everything else kind of just gets forgotten about. So if you're looking for a Morelia, Volko, Kingpath, Apep or Ratbo deck, then these will certainly do you well. 
the King Puff deck in third place. This was a Dark Crow deck, just to give you a bit of um, behind the scenes on that. Very, very strong Minion Masters player. Right, so those are the solo decks. Then, of course, we're going to have a look at the decks for the 2v2 randoms. So this is where wild cards come into that. I wasn't sure how to include wild cards, but I just included them and then just averaged out the rank. Uh, so if you're playing wild cards that are kind of not a top card, then that really hurts your overall rank. Whereas if you're playing a very highly ranked wild card, then that kind of helps your overall rank. But again, <clears throat> we've got a King Puff, Apep, Morelia, Diona, and a Mordar deck. And we can see some of these are using wild cards, some of them are not. Now, the, the Mordar deck, I had to double check the data to make sure that I hadn't somehow messed up because it looked on paper it didn't look like a very good Mordar deck but uh, according to the stats um, it seems like it could be um, I don't know if this is kind of a weird way that uh, the way that we're figuring out the, the stats that kind of these, these weird things can pop out but it seems like a decent Mordar deck but it's got a lot of bad reses in it so it's definitely not an easy Mordar deck but uh, if you get the it's kind of got the cheap cycle to get to your big cards and as long as you play your tombstones and these cards smartly the cheaper cards then you know potentially you could get some good value out of it so that's kind of an interesting one um and these are the the, the best decks according to the data for uh, 2v2 randoms and interesting to see king puff right up there at the top um and it, if we look at the cards in there these were all very heavily played cards and, uh, and that kind of makes sense because it's based on the most heavily played cards. Right, so that's the 2v2 randoms and now we'll have a look at 2v2 pre-mades. So here we see Diona, Volko, Setsu, King Puff and Morelia. Now there was also um, an APEP version of the Diona, uh, but it seemed a little boring to just have exactly the same deck even though most of the decks are very very similar uh perk three sets sorry perk three um rank three setsu this was another dark crow deck so a deck made by a very very skilled player um, and interesting here no wild cards in any of these decks um, and we know that kind of overall most people are not playing wild cards there's a few things that feel really abusive with wild cards this season uh, Prime Sergeant Radic is definitely one of those. He feels very, very strong when wild carded. Um, I don't know if he needs rebalancing or just maybe having the wild cards removed from him. Uh, but again, we can see a lot of similarities here. Uh, and it's kind of interesting to see that Rimmergold Breath in all of these, despite it getting nerfed, uh, we're still seeing a decent play rate of these. Uh, and. Uh, cleaver in those in all of these as well so a lot of similarities uh, but also some differences right so those are the decks as i said before if you could let me know in the comments what do you think about this deck edition and the way that we've done it does it make sense is it useful and crucially is there any way that we could um, make it better because one thing i've noticed thinking about it is we this is simply based on play rate we don't take into account the rank of the decks within the, the 50 top decks on the leaderboard. Um, so I wonder if we could do that um, and if that we could take that into account and if that would make anything more useful coming out at the other end. Right, so that's the end of our mm, session, Minion Masters meta. I hope you did enjoy it. There's a, a lot of information that's been crunched and hopefully this is really useful to you. As always, let me know in the comments what did you think of this? Has it been helpful to you, whether you're a new player or an experienced player? And as I mentioned before, two cards were not played at all. What were they? Put them down in the comments. If you're one of the first people to guess one of those two cards, then I shall send you a little Minion Masters gift. Um, and of course, if you're new here and uh, you want to keep up to date with Minion Masters content, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. It really does put a little smile on the fishy face. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And I think that's pretty much all I wanted to cover today. So, um, yeah, I'll see you on the battlefield soon. Just a quick reminder that this season is going to be a long season. So I think what we're going to end up having 
is we're probably going to have like an, a, a balance patch when we would expect the next patch, uh, but it, there's going to be no new content. So it'll be simply a balance patch. Uh, and then hopefully in December, we'll have Mini Masters 2.0, which is uh, very exciting, exciting to get our hands on. And as a reminder, Netflix Gaming, Mini Masters, Mobile, iOS and Android, that should be coming early in 2024, which, you know, don't worry, that might sound like a long time, but it's not very far away. So things are looking very exciting for Mini Masters. I'm excited. Hopefully you are too. Um, and as always, I'm bad as a fish and I'm awkwardly waving. Oh, before I go, one last thing. You may have noticed, if you've been following the last few Mini Masters metas, that um, this time I didn't include the breakdown of cards per master. Uh, and whilst I did have the data, it's just really tedious to set up all the slides for them. So I kind of glossed over it this, this time. So let me know if you really miss that and maybe it will come back. Maybe I can just put the data in a YouTube comment or something. So if you really want to look at what was the best cards if I wanted to play Milloween in randoms, for example. Uh, so let me know. Anyway, see you soon.